Hello, I'm Adam Riley and I'm here to solve Prepping Data 2024 Week 40 with you. Uh, so this week we've got some sales data from an online uh, vehicle, so car sales I think, um, tracking system. We've got two files, we've got a file of users and we've got a file of advert data. Uh, so the first task we have is to input the data sets. I've preloaded both the CSVs into my Enzo project just to make it easier for the video uh, and I've already configured my data read up here with the user data. So if we start by looking at this file we'll see this isn't the best of formats for a data file. Um, so it's got, so I presume this is a header. Uh, we've not auto detected the header here so if I switch the format to delimited and under headers choose has headers that puts the user data in. And then we've got all these user IDs which seem to be in a single row of data separated by commas. So the first task we need to do is here on the right uh, to break the user data into individual records. So for that we need to use the split to rows component. This defaults to a comma delimiter which is great. Uh, we choose the users column. And if we look at that, that's now split the data into individual rows. We've got 365 rows, which matches our instructions over here on the right. So that's a good start. OK, so next up, so the user data is formed from. So the first seven characters of the user ID. The last letter signifies whether it's a private individual, that's a P, or dealership sale, or dealership user, I guess, D. And then three characters after the user ID for dealerships is the dealer ID. Okay, so if it's these first two, look, show us the different ones. So this one ends in D, and it's got an extra three characters, which is this D30, which is the dealership ID. Whereas this one's a P and doesn't have those. So let's split out those parts. Um, so we'll need a series of components. Uh, we'll use the set component to create a new column. And we will use an expression. So to get the first seven characters, we can just use the text left of the users for seven characters, and we will name that user ID. Let's look at that. Yep, that's a good start. And then we will do a very similar expression, but on the right hand side. So we'll take text right of users for one character uh, and we'll call that yes, type. So this should be a P or D. Yep, looks good. Okay, so then this next one's a little trickier, so but I think we'd still do it with a set. Just the expression will be slightly more complex. So we want to say let's start with an empty one. So if We'll use that newly created type field. So if type equals D, so if it's a dealership, then we need to extract those three characters before the D. So to do that, we can do, if we do text right again of that user's column and take the right four bytes, so that gives us dealer code plus the D. Um, we can take a look at this as we go. I'll show you it building up. So, otherwise, we'll just say it's nothing. So, that, so if we look at that, so this right four is giving us the D30D. So now we need to take the left three of this field. So I can come back up here, edit my expression, do text left of this thing for three characters. And that should give us hopefully D30 and D50. If I typed it right, there we go, D30, D50. Uh, and that is the dealer ID we said, so just name it there. Great, so that looks like it's got the first sort of user data file cleaned up. So with the ads data, so this is the second file now, we're moving the unsold vehicles. So if I just take a copy of this data read component and put it down here. And so I've preloaded this data into the project so I can just switch across to the ads data. Uh, and let's take a look at what this data looks like. 
and we'll go full screen mode for this one so just using this icon here just to take a good look at our data set before we get started uh, so this one's much more of a sane data format it's obviously a delimited file with proper delimiters we've auto detected the types of some of the numeric fields we've not auto detected these date formats so we're probably going to need to do some date parsing and over here on the right hand side the sale date is obviously in a different date format just to make things interesting for us uh, so let's take a look what we need to do with this farm so if I just move the screen up a little bit so we can focus on this screen for now okay so first thing is remove any unsold vehicles so presumably unsold vehicles are anything without a sales date so we can just do filter where sales date and there should be a, is not nothing let's have a look at that Yep, that's good. Um, okay, now join the data set together. So that's fairly quick moving on to. So we can. Let's just close that up. And how am I going to arrange these? Let's put join in. Okay, so the right side is this user data. Uh, we'll do a inner join on so a user ID field there. Connect that to the user ID field we created here. Um, okay, so we're getting a type error. So types integer 64 and char can't be compared to each other. So this is because the user ID that came in from the user file was text because we're doing all text manipulation. The one that's come in from the ads data has been auto detected as an integer. So we just need to convert one of them um, one way or the other. So I don't particularly have a preference. Let's do the no, let's do the one we created above into a number. So I think we can just do a pass of the user ID. To an integer, and if we then put that into the right there, there we go. That error message has gone away. So, important thing to do after any join is to check your counts. So, we had 365 users um, going into the join. We had 513 adverts. So, hopefully, all of the adverts have got valid users. So, we should have. Yeah, okay, so we're good. So 513, so we haven't dropped any adverts. Um, so that's looking good. Okay, so find when an advert is first posted. Okay, so I think for this, we want to clean up these date fields so they're actually in a date format. So you can see, if we look in the visualization, at the minute they're chars, not dates. Which just means doing any manipulation in so it's going to be a bit trickier so let's just move the screen up a bit uh, and we will pass these date fields so we've got publish timestamp the update timestamp and the delete timestamp uh, these are date times uh, so we're getting a warming that says the default format doesn't match which i guess we kind of expected because the default format probably would have auto typed if they did match. So it's not immediately obvious from the ones we're looking at here whether they're US dates or UK dates. Um, although I think, well, those registration numbers don't look like US registration numbers. So let's go with this in a UK data set and we'll try in UK date format to start with. Um, so we need to go down and find the date time one. This looks like the one we want. DD, MM. Yep, let's try that. Great. So the warning's gone away. That means we've passed all the data in those columns correctly. And now if we look, these are now date times. So we can do date time manipulation with them in Enzo. Uh, there was one more daytime column if we remember which was the um, 
sale date. So we should also pass that one while we're cleaning up our date formats. Uh, so we need a separate pass tool because it's a different format. This is the sale date. And this was actually a date, not a date time. And the format for this one, I think it's that one. Yep. So again, just checking that. Uh, there it is. Sale date is now a date format in Enzo. Okay. So now we've got those dates cleaned up. We can move on to the next thing. So find when an advert is first posted. So. Okay, so we're going to add ID. We've got publish timestamp, an update timestamp, and a delete timestamp. So I'm guessing it's the publish timestamp is what we want. So we will do a aggregate group by the add ID, and for the columns, we'll take the minimum of the publish timestamp and we'll call this first publish okay let's take a look at that um, so yep yeah, so we've now got add ID and first published date time the row count seems strange because it's still the same row count which isn't what we'd expect because yeah okay I don't quite know I only keep the records where advert was first posted so we're going to end up keeping all of those records so maybe add ID wasn't the right ah uh, maybe registration number is the key so I guess a a vehicle is posted multiple times, it gets a different reg, it gets a different ad ID each time, but it's still the same vehicle. Let's switch that. So instead of grouping by ad ID, let's switch it by group it by registration number. And let's take ad ID out. Okay, so now we're down to 246 rows. That seems more, yeah, okay. So now if I join this data back, I can filter, so it wants me to filter down, I only keep the ones, basically keep these first published records. So I'm just going to use a join to do this. Um, so we'll do it in a join on um, registration number, to registration number don't need to specify the right on if the names match uh, and then if I do publish timestamp <coughs> equals the first published timestamp <coughs> then all being well I'm assuming there wasn't multiple records on the same day we should get dropped down to our 426 yeah great okay so these are the four records now for those first published dates um, find the time between when the vehicle was first advertised on the site to when the vehicle was sold. Find the average days for each sale a dealership has listed, grouped to the nearest whole day output the data. Okay, so we want to do it in days. Time between when the vehicle is first advertised to when the vehicle was sold. Okay, so let's start by casting so I need to begin both as dates if I'm doing a day comparison so publish timestamp if I just cast that to a date type so that's just gonna chop off the time for so instead of having the exact time it was published it was published on the 1st of January then I can do a set and I use the simple expression this time. So if I choose the publish timestamp, then I can use the date functions to do a diff against the sale date. 
and choose period of day and we'll call this days to sell let's take a look at that okay and then we need the average days for each sale a dealership has listed okay so now we want to do an aggregate by dealer ID and the average so another aggregate we all group by the dealer ID and this time we're doing a average of the days to sell let's take a look at that um, okay oh and then I need to round I was looking at the answer and realizing I'm not quite got the let's move that up so you can see that I haven't quite got the same numbers that they've got um, so I've got this nothing so these are all the personal sales which so I mean I guess might be interesting to keep that so it'd be interesting to compare the dealerships against the personal sales and um, they've obviously dropped it from their one but also they wanted grouped up to the nearest whole day so I think for that if I just do a set uh, I'll use the simple expression this time average days to sell and under math I think we've got a ceiling there we go and I just set that to update or override the original one okay so we've got D28 D59 yep so we're matching theirs yeah and then I just I'm gonna fill that nothing value in um, so dealer ID I'm going to update it to a text value and just put personal sale in there so I've still got that information for comparison um, so that's just replace the nothing value and there look with personal sale so there we are that is prepping data week number 40 solved in Enzo uh, thank you for watching